Hi, I'm Stan Kiawa with the Professional Drum Shop in Hollywood, California. My brother Tom is holding the camera for us today. Expertly holding it. Expertly. We are going to show everyone how to tuck a calf or goatskin head, as you will, onto a snare drum. It's a process that uh, not done very many times nowadays, but I've been doing it all my life here. And what's the benefit of having like a calf head on a The benefit on a of calf head, Thomas, would be the warmth and that old fat type snare sound from the old days. It's old fashioned. The old fashioned way, rather than the plastic. In fact, in the back of the days, uh, you notice most of the old snare drums, and any drums for that matter, the edges, uh, they never bothered to pay attention to the edges back in the day because a calf head will conform to its environment. So there's no need to make a perfect sharp edge for a calf head back in the day. We don't need a special degree for that? Nope. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> and uh, that's when the plastic head came along in 57, 58 with Remo and Bob Evans, both of them going at it at the same time. Uh, drums had to be a little bit more particular to match up with the plastic because the plastic would not conform uh, because of the weather. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's show the process here. What do we got to so do? So what we got, uh, first of all, you have to decide on, on what snare drum you have because you have to choose the flesh hoop. Most important part. The flesh hoop has got to be able to fit over your shell and inside your hoop. You, so you make sure you always have enough slop of this nature. This is actually from a 1940s Radio King flesh hoop that I have. Uh, if you don't have access to something like that or an old calf head, then you can cut out the plastic on a regular either Remo or Aquarian head and you cut the plastic out, you have to rough up the edges all the way around because the hide will slip. But that's another way of doing it. I've done that too, it works. So the head has to have some kind of support when you, when you tuck it. That's correct. why it has the ring. That's correct, it's called the flesh hoop, yes. So on this particular customer, I ask him, I always ask him, is it for a newer style drum, say from uh, uh, 70s on, or is it an old snare drum? Because they're a little oversized back in those days. The 40s and 50s Radio Kings are always a little bit of a pain when you try to get a flesh hoop on there correctly. The preformed ones. The hides that I get come from Stern Tanning. Jeff Stern, these are high-end calf heads, what they are. It's from the old company that he had bought from uh, Steve was his name at the time, who just passed away by the way, like 98 years old. But uh, the whole idea is to soak your hide. Excuse me, first of all, you need about 18 inches for a 14 inch drum. You, you gotta make sure that you have enough room to make that turn. So rule of thumb, four inches bigger than the drum that you're gonna be doing it for whether it be calf or goat, either way. And again, you have to make sure that you have enough slop here because when you soak that hide, that hide is swollen and you have to get it back into the hoop. But it also has to go over the shell. So there's a fine line there. You can, you can just sand it and grind it all the way around and make sure you have enough slop in there to fit that head. All right. So the hide, we've got soaking here for maybe 35, 45 minutes. It's very pliable. Somebody's calling. Should we get that? Nah. <laughs> We're not open yet. We're not open yet, people. So here, the key to these hides now, you got to find out which one's the smooth side, which is the playing side. So basically, on these, it's easy because they're marked. But if you don't have a marked hide, what you do is you take your fingernail. And you, if you see a roughness going on there, that is the bottom side. If you do that on the top, there's nothing. That's the playing side. I hope the camera is picking that up. It's pretty obvious in person, though. So that's the playing side right there. So when you start, you want to start playing side down. One of the problems that you may have is trying to find one of these. These have been here since the 60s. These are, I grew up with these. Uh, tucking tool. I don't know if they're even available anymore out there. But you can make them out of a spoon or any other type of metal, but it has to be a little stiff. You can't get, use it like an aluminum that just will just bend too much because there's a lot of pressure going on. But the tucking tool is a key. It makes it a little easier for me. 
Now on this flash hoop, you want to use the flat side is where the hoop goes on top. So we're going to put it down here this way. And you kind of line it up, eyeball it in there. And then here's your first tuck. Is you, I do the first one by hand. You got to go around, underneath, and boom. And you got your first tuck in there, which is nice and tight. I usually use a couple of pins just to hold it. Because now you want to go sideways, boom, boom, and then you start going around. So here, you line it up again. Always very important because you don't want to run out of stock when you're trying to tuck it. I'm going to soak up just a little bit of this water. Again, this head is swollen, and this is what I was talking about before. But when when they dry, they're very thin, and then no problem getting it into your hoop. But this is the, always a little bit of an issue. You got to make sure you get a nice tight tuck. So here we go. We start here this way. Get your tool, lift up a little bit, and under we go. a little extra help there and let's go across this way same thing I'm actually go all the way around you, you want to get that hide all the way up and in that tuck and you just kind of work it all the way around we go across again Fascinating process. Very old world. Old world. Everybody was doing it back in the day. All most drummers did it themselves. Really? Yeah. When they broke their head, they already had the flesh hoop because they would use the old one. Go to the store, buy a hide because there were that was all available. There were no Remo heads, and a lot of guys just tucked in themselves back in the day. And there's an old another old company called the Amraco head company, I believe we were in Texas. We used to sell a lot of those back in the early 60s until the plastic head started taking over. I would say that you're making this look a lot easier than it probably is. This, this, I've been tucking heads since <laughs> 1968, so I, I do have it, I'll slow it down a little bit for you, but that's the gist of it right there. You just gotta make sure you get the tautness so it holds itself. And that's the key to the wooden hoop. It doesn't allow that hide to slip out, whereas if you use the metal one here, you really gotta rough that up all the way around with a file or a grinder, anything that would make it so the hide has to will stick to it, will bite, I guess the best way to describe it. Think about the work involved in the old days if you were running a drum company and you had to tuck all the heads. What a pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> how, did, how did they make any money doing this? <laughs> yeah, well, everybody was working. <laughs> everybody had a gig. <laughs> Almost got her here. And then, and then we go back and we're going to try to clean it up a little bit because this, this hide will dry very tight around this hoop. And it may appear a little messy on the side or whatever, but that will go away in the drying time. So not to worry about that if you see that. How long does it take to dry? Uh, you want to give it a good three days. California weather, a couple days, because we're dry all the time here. But it's, it's inside that tuck is where the problem is. As you can see what I was talking about, the roughness there. That's the tough part. You kind of want to just want to clean that up just a little bit. Because you got to get it into that hoop. That's the tough part. So you just kind of go around like that. Push it up with my thumb. Push it up with your tool. Just to make a little better, smoother entry into the hoop. So you just go all the way around. Yeah, you like just kind of, you get the big fat areas. If something pops up a little bit, like so, boom. A little tighter there and then tuck her back in there again that's all okay
Okay, I think we got her. So with any luck, I have sanded down this flesh hoop enough for it to slip into this hoop. And back in the old days, they only had double flange hoop. These are triple flange, which is that lip right there. That's the tough part. So here we go. Let's see what we got right here. Just kind of work it, work it, and we're in, like so. And there's the hide. The drum. This gentleman who this is for told me getting back to with the old and new shells. Um, I asked him on, on over the phone because he's buying this through the mail. So I just can't send him a pre-tucked head because it, it may not fit on his old drum. That's why I asked him, is it old drum or new drum? He said, new drum. I said, no problem. And I try to tuck them to order, which that way there's no problems. Let's go sh straight on like that. And start your rods. And you want to bring it down about a half inch. It's what they call collar. If you ever buy a new head, even the plastic ones, they have a little half inch collar. And that's what we're going to do with this one. Once we start them all. So by having it dry on the drum head, you're basically forming the whole shape of it, right? That's correct. And it will dry to the environment of, of that shell. Um, if you want to take this hide off and take it onto another drum, it only takes a few more days and it creates its own new edge again because of the weather. If you live in a moist area, say the, on the coast, Northern California or whatever, or back east where it's humidity, it will reform itself onto the new drum if you want to reuse this on another drum, say a wooden drum, because the edges are different from the wood to metal. So it will conform to it. So, so they're very versatile that way. And if you buy the right hide, they last a long time, no doubt about it. one of those guns <laughs> for speed speed key speed key you want, when you give a little push this, this is where you start making the collar as I was talking about you want, you want it to dry about a half inch of collar on this thing I think I almost got it And how are you estimating the half inch collar? What are we looking at for that? Yeah, sorry for that. What, I, what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm, I'm holding my fingers here and I feel it. I can feel the edge to where how deep this hoop is going. That's just something of, of nature from all the years I've been doing it. Okay, very good. So it, it's just a matter of I'm feeling it right there. And, and then after that, then I do a visual. It should be coming up here in a minute. Almost got it. Now I'm looking down on it, and you can see whether you're high in one area or low in one area and so forth. But you want to try to make it as even as possible. I mean, it's not the end of the world if it's not perfect. But I've got it right about a half inch all the way around. Get a little excess off. And there you have it. All right. And you give it, uh, I would give it two to three days just to make sure that that flesh hoop is totally dry and then Go to the gig. All right. Sounds good. All right. Thanks. Thank you.